Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of straight lines. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here from this topic, the question tells us that a point P moves so that sum of squares of its distances from the points so two points are given to us that is one comma two and minus two comma one so we have been told that some of the squares of its distances from these two points it's given to us as 14 then the question further tells us if a function of x comma y is equal to zero this is basically a locus of this point p which is moving and it also tells us that this locus intersects x axis at two points A and B, and the same locus intersects Y axis at the points C and D. Then the question further asks us to find out the area of the quadrilateral, which is present, which is A, B, C, D. And if I talk about the answer choices that are present here in this question, they are nine over two. The second answer choice given to us is three root 17 over two. Third answer choice, it's telling us 3 root 17 over 4. And the last answer choice given to us, it's 9. So we need to figure out which one of the answers is the correct answer for the area of quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So let's see how to solve this type of questions, which deals with the ideas of straight lines. Before starting off with the solution, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing every day, that is, we are doing every day one question from the previous years of JWE mains please do subscribe to my channel as well if i start off with the solution let's take a point p with let's say coordinates h comma k now if i apply the idea it's telling me that sum of the squares of its distances from this as well as this so we know that the distance formula it's basically given by square root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square so first distance of that point p from 1 comma 2 will become square root of x or h minus 1 the whole square plus k minus 2 the whole square and the other one this is first distance and the second distance that is given to us that we have to find out from the other coordinate which is minus 2 comma 1 so it basically becomes h minus minus 2 the whole square plus k minus 1 the whole square so these are the two distances given to us and the question tells us that you have to equate the sum of the squares of this distances from the points this and this equals 14 so if i find the sum of squares of the distances so if i square this distance And if I find the sum with the square of other distance, that is given to us as 14. So we have been given this entire thing is equal to 14. So from there, I get h minus 1 the whole square, k minus 2 the whole square. The next is h plus 2 the whole square. Because I'm squaring this also, so square root and square gets cancelled. So h plus 2 the whole square and k minus 1 the whole square equals 14 so if i solve this further i get a minus b the whole square so a square minus 2ab plus b square again k minus 2 the whole square so k square minus 2ab so 4k plus b square which is 4 here it is a plus b the whole square instead so a square plus 2ab so 2 into h into 2 which is 4h plus b square which is 4 k minus 1 the whole square so k square minus 2k plus 1 equals 14 so if I solve this entire thing now, let's try to solve it. So h square plus h square basically makes it 2h square. k square plus k square makes it 2k square. Minus 2h and plus 4h. So 4h and minus 2h is plus 2h. Next, it's telling us minus 4k and minus 2k. So it's minus 6k. Then 1 plus 4, 5 plus 4, 9, 9 plus 1, 10. 10 and minus 14, so minus 4 equals 0. So I have this entire thing with me. 
Now, once I have this entire thing, if I divide throughout by two, I get my locus of the point B as h square plus k square minus plus h minus three k minus two equals zero. So I'm dividing throughout this entire equation by two. So I have got my locus of point P. Now it further tells me in the question that f x comma y equals zero is nothing but the locus of point P. So instead of h comma k, I will just substitute x comma y instead of h and k here respectively. So if I do that, my locus of point P becomes x squared plus y squared plus x minus 3y minus 2 equals 0. So instead of h everywhere, I have substituted x and instead of k everywhere, I have substituted that as y. So this gives me the locus of point P. Now the question further tells me that this locus of point P intersects x axis at two points A and B. So if it is intersecting x axis, let's say, so if you have some x square plus y square plus x minus 3y minus 2 equals 0, this entire thing it's telling you it's intersecting x axis at points A and B. So when it is intersecting x axis, what do you know is basically the y coordinate becomes 0. So if I want to find the point of intersection of that curve with x axis, I will just put y equals 0 in my locus. So if I put y equals to zero here, I get my equation turning out to become x square plus x and minus two. So if I try to further simplify the middle term, I can write this as factorizing it. So x square plus x and minus two. So I get this as plus two x minus x minus two. So I can factorize it by splitting the middle term. So x common x plus two, minus 1 x plus 2 equals 0. So that gives me x plus 2 equals 0 or the remaining things x minus 1 equals 0. That gives me two coordinates of x that is minus 2 and 1. So I understand that this curve intersects x axis at the coordinate 1 comma 0 and it intersects the y coordinate as minus 2 comma 0. So that's basically my two x coordinates or my points of intersection of that curve with x axis. Now let's find the point of intersection of that same curve with y axis. So basically when it intersects with y axis, what happens is you have your x coordinate turning out to become zero. So if I put my x coordinate zero now, in that curve, I get this x zero zero. So I get y square minus three y minus two equals zero now if i try to factorize it there are no two such real numbers or natural numbers which will split the middle term so what i will do is i'll have to do this solving of the quadratic by the formula which we have already with us which is minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so if i first figure out b square minus 4ac so b square minus 4ac means b in this case, a is 1, b is minus 3 and c is minus 2. So if I do that, minus 3 squared minus 4 a is 1, c is minus 2. So that gives you 9, this gives you plus 8 and that basically makes it 17. So inside the root you have 17 divided by 2 a, a in this case is basically 1 and minus b. So minus of minus three. So that makes it three plus minus root 17 divided by two. So from there, when I'm putting X as zero, I have got two values of Y. One is three plus root 17 divided by two. The other is three minus root 17 divided. By two. Now, once I have my two coordinates, three plus root 17 divided by two, if I just randomly put my Y coordinates, let's say somewhere here, so it's three plus root 17 divided by two. The other is, let's say here, three minus root 17 divided by two. So the question tells us that this curve intersects X axis at points A and B and Y axis at C and D. So if I just mark those points that are given to us, let's put that. So let's say this is A, B, C, D. So then the question tells us that whatever quadrilateral is formed with these four points, you find the area of that quadrilateral. Now, if I figure out the area of the quadrilateral ABCD, which is asked to us, so let's do that. So area of quadrilateral ABCD, 
if i see area of quadrilateral it is basically nothing but area of this triangle which is present and area of this triangle which is present or i can take it also as area of this quadrilateral or area of this triangle which is acb and area of triangle abd so if i do that any which ways i will get the area of quadrilateral so area of triangle acb plus area of triangle adb so let's do that so area of triangle we know it's half base height plus half base height. so if for acb if i figure out half base and height so half into base we know it is basically one unit and two units so total base is of three units so half into three into three plus root 17 divided by two because that's a positive height plus half into base again it's of three units yet but height if i talk about three minus root 17 divided by two so if you see three minus root 17 it's basically greater than four point something right so it's four point something divided by two so three minus four point something if you do it's negative value divided by two it's basically a negative answer but when i take the height height should always be positive so to make the height positive i'll have to basically take the mod of this so when i take the mod of this three minus root 17 divided by two we should get a positive answer and to get a positive answer the sign of this two values changes so it basically becomes root 17 minus 3 divided by 2. so when it basically becomes root 17 minus 3 divided by 2 i have area of this triangle also with me now if i just add both of them i can see half 3 and 2 in the denominator is common so if i just add this quantities i have 3 plus root 17 plus root 17 and minus 3 so that gives me this and this gets cancelled and when this and this gets cancelled you have 1 over 4 and this becomes 3 root 17 plus root 17 which is 2 root 17 so from here i can cancel one more two so from there i get the answer as 3 root 17 divided by 2 and if i see the answer choice that matches here with the question it is option b so B becomes a correct answer for the area of quadrilateral which was asked to us for this quadrilateral ABCD where A and B were the points of intersection of the locus with X axis and C and D were the points of intersection of the locus with Y axis. So B becomes a correct answer here. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on GWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you are enjoying these videos, please do like the videos as well. And do subscribe to my channel. And share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of questions on GWE. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.